I'm so excited about this word for today. I can't even put it into words. Um, so the Lord's been putting it on my heart maybe for about a week now um, to talk about um, what causes hardness of heart. So he told me at one point um, that bitterness actually hardens the heart but he just went into detail praise the lord for this word praise the king of glory he gets all the glory out of this this is going to be powerful today i promise you um so that being said we're just going to start with the word apathy what is apathy what does it mean so apathy comes from a greek word apatheia which comes from the adjective apathes meaning without feeling apathes was formed with combining the prefix pathos meaning emotion so apathy is the absence of feeling emotions pain fear desire or pleasure apathia represented a sort of tranquility We'll just call it a false peace achieved by becoming indifferent to pleasure or pain. I want to emphasize that although we would all love to avoid the pain, the heartbreak, the suffering that life sometimes brings, apathy not only numbs you to that side of it, but it is also the breeding ground for joylessness where even... Even though you're not sad over your condition, you have no happiness either. So how does apathy get into our hearts? The Lord revealed that bitterness in our hearts causes hard-heartedness, a lack of empathy, a lack of compassion, a lack of gentleness or tenderness, a lack of understanding, a lack of kindness, a lack of love. This is not something you or I ever want in our heart. As a child of God, we are commanded to love. We are commanded to bear each other's burdens, to cry with those who cry and laugh with those who laugh when appropriate. We cannot love in the way we are commanded with apathy and bitterness in our hearts. It will taint, defile, and destroy every relationship we have. It must be dealt with. So how does bitterness get in? It starts with offense. And why do we even get offended? Because of our pride. So how do we guard our hearts from offense? How do we keep from being offended how do we avoid our hearts becoming like a stone continual and unrepentant sin causes a hard heart and a lot of times the effects and the outcome and the consequences of continual and unrepentant sin causes us to become bitter towards God but what can we do number one we can pray against it especially during a time where we know we're being attacked or God is showing us an area of pride an area of something that is not of him that needs to be uprooted out of your mind your heart your soul that could open us up to offense if we let it. We must be vigilant. 1 Peter 5, 8. The New King James Version says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. In another version, it says this, Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. The next line says, but resist him. 
firm in your faith. When we resist the devil, he flees. It is that simple. Have you ever seen when a lion stalks their prey, what they do? The lion will crouch down. The lion will watch its prey. The lion will then select its prey and then stalk its prey waiting for an opportune moment just like the devil the lion looks for weakness vulnerability opportune moments to catch us off guard the bible says to watch over our hearts with all diligence and to Matthew 26, 41 says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Don't just pray. Watch, observe, pay attention, be alert. And pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. If you answer a fleshly response, with your flesh it's like throwing gasoline on a fire it will only escalate emotions that were already heightened to begin with so we have to be led by the spirit that's easier said than done when someone is screaming in your face right but we can do all things through christ who strengthens us hallelujah so what do we do when we can't pray out loud, maybe they're right in front of us. When the vessel being used to open us up to offense is standing right in front of us, the second that you notice that twinge and you're going to feel it, I promise me you, you will if you're paying attention. You notice that twinge of discomfort in something they said or did, pray in your mind. Lord, guard my heart from taking offense. They know not what they do. Forgive them, Lord. Fill me with mercy. Give me a tender, responsive heart all the while. While they're yelling, you do this. Watch how their heart changes. And just keep praying. Show them you. Move me out of the way. Restrain my flesh from reacting in a negative way. You will get the glory out of this. We must also constantly and consistently check our hearts. I've talked about this multiple times and I will continue to emphasize the importance of this, especially when these moments arise. Don't let it sit. Don't let it linger. Pray against it immediately. Ask the Lord to reveal what just entered your heart through that interaction and then confess it. Ask for forgiveness and ask him to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So what do we do when these moments arise? Right after the fact, we're going to ask some very important questions. After the first sign of offense, Lord, was there some truth to what they just said? Why did that hurt so bad? Why did that bother me so much? Reveal to me these hidden faults. Forgive me of them and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. These moments, brothers, sisters, remnant of God, body of Christ, these moments we need to rejoice in. They're like a refiner's fire. Darkness is being pulled out into God's marvelous light, brought forth and exposed. But once it's acknowledged and confessed, any foothold Satan had, he loses in that moment. He loses it completely. Again, we're told to be vigilant. So what does that even mean? The Greek word for vigilant is Gregoriuo. It means alert, awake, watchful. Keep watch and be on guard. We have to always be on guard. We don't wrestle against flesh, flesh and blood. We wrestle against powers and principalities and rulers of wickedness in heavenly places. Not the person that's screaming in front of us. The enemy doesn't sleep. 
and we can't sleep on him. He will use whoever is being led by their flesh in that moment. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and nothing is off limits. He wants your joy. He wants your peace. He wants to wear you out with fear, worry, and anxious thoughts. Don't let the devil just rent space in your head. Kick him out. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Devil, my peace does not belong to you. It's not yours to take and you can't have it. In Jesus' name, I refuse to be weary and walking around with a downcast soul. My soul belongs to Jesus. I command my soul to rejoice in the day the Lord has made. Apathy will not make a home in me. I will have a tender and responsive heart. I will have a merciful heart. I will have a compassionate heart. My heart will break for the things that break God's heart. Devil, you can't have my joy. My joy doesn't belong to you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In his presence is fullness of joy. Anything robbing my joy, this is your eviction notice. Get out now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil's been throwing blows at you long enough. It's time to throw some back. God did not give you a spirit of frustration, discouragement, despair, and hopelessness. He gave you a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So we command with the authority the Lord has given us in his name for everything attacking our mental soundness to go right now and never come back in Jesus' name. Apathy will not make a home here. Every bitter root is being plucked up and burned away with the all-consuming fire of God in Jesus' mighty name. The peace of Christ will rule in our hearts. The Holy Spirit will establish his dominion in us. Our temples will be a place of holiness, sanctity, righteousness, and purity. So every unclean thing that made a home here, your time is up in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ is ruler, Lord, and King of my life, and you will submit to his authority. Hallelujah. We shut the door to every snare of the devil that so easily entangles. We cancel every assignment of hell. No curse causeless shall stand. We are citizens of heaven, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and we will not be shaken or moved. Hallelujah. Every witch, every warlock, every high priest or priestess, every sorceress, be put to flight now with the angel of the Lord pursuing you. As the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. The enemy will come at us one way and flee in seven. We will not be careless virgins with no oil in our lamps. We will be filled with the all-consuming fire of God, a refiner's fire. We will be purified like silver, seven times refined and come forth as gold. We will not compromise. We will turn our eyes away from worthless things and remember them no more. Death, where is your sting? Death, where is is your victory. Our victory is in the name above any other. Hallelujah. Our victory is in the name of Jesus. Fear of man is a snare. All fear of man must go right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the righteous are as bold as a lion. We will walk in that boldness. We will not shrink back. We will not be ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We will resist the devil and he will flee right now. The weapons will form, but they won't ever prosper. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He gives might 
to them that have no strength. His power is perfected in my weakness. I will not grow weary in my well-doing. Weariness must go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All heaviness must lift. We exchange all heaviness for the garment of praise. Let praises rise. We will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in our mouths. We will mount up on wings like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Strength be renewed in Jesus' name. Strength be restored. In Jesus' name, our bodies are a temple of the living God. We will be holy as he is holy. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Bodies be healed. In the name of the Lord, the Lord rebukes all infirmity. You must go now, says the Lord. Leap and never return. Bodies be restored, says the Lord. Every afflicted place receive healing right now, says the Lord. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you shall be healed, says the Lord. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. Hallelujah. He is the King of glory. Let the whole earth praise his holy name.